Hi, Cancer. Welcome to your July 2018 astral update. It's Rena here. Well, you're the first sign that I'm doing, and this is quite a month for 2018. Perhaps we could even call it the turning point because we did have eclipse energy back in February, late January, but pretty much it was the last day of January, so we could say February the early part of the year, in other words, and now we're at the midpoint. And so this could be considered the turning point. This is a nine universal month in numerology. So July is a seven and this year is an 11, which reduces to a two. So a nine universal month is a great time to tie up those loose ends of your life and get all your ducks in a row for the one universal month happening in August. But we do have a solar eclipse, so we can't just totally say that it's all about endings. We have a solar eclipse and then we have a lunar eclipse. And the solar eclipse is in your sign. So Cancer, this is a very exciting month for you. It's already your solar return period. And most of you will be celebrating birthdays in July, so happy birthday. And I'm sure that many of you will be listening in June, so happy birthday to you guys too. And so the solar eclipse is at 20 degrees of Cancer on the 12th, and a solar eclipse is a very powerful new moon. New moons are times of new beginnings, planting seeds of intention, what is it that you want to manifest. And when it's your new moon, so whenever it's your solar return, your the new moon in your sign will be the time of your new moon, then obviously this really applies for the next solar cycle of a year. And if you're watching for Cancer Rising, the, the your natal chart cycle so, because that's your, going to be your first house however this is a general forecast I know that you know that because it really does depend on what your degree of sun or rising is and actually if you're watching this for your sun in cancer your rising sign can be anything and that means that this solar eclipse could occur in any house not just what I'm saying on here and that's kind of exciting uh, from the perspective of there's no limit to what this may mean for you personally. So if you would like a personalized reading, I will link my natal chart interpretation reading specifically below because that is the closest to this type of reading. It's the same process. And, and then I'm looking at it for the coming 12 months in different areas of your life, looking at the astrological trends and how they affect you. And so for the solar eclipse, for pra all practical purposes, we're going to say that it's falling in your first house of the self. And so you may be feeling that a lot of doors are opening up for you. Some astrologers will say that you may feel the effects of the eclipse before the actual date. And so even in sometime in June, late June, you may start to see change. Remember that eclipses, whether it be solar or lunar, are about change. And we get hung up a lot about beginnings and endings. Solar eclipses are new moons, so it's supposed to be about new beginnings and lunar eclipses, endings. And because they are eclipses, there's this sense of not being able to control things. But in reality, it's really um, not so much that one are endings and one are beginnings. Because if you think about it, take a solar eclipse. Let's say that it turns out that you are able to get a new job that you really love, right? Right. Well, even if you start a new job that you love, you have to leave an old job. 
And there may might have been good things about that. And there might have been people that you enjoyed working with. So there's going to be endings and there's going to be change. If you are going, you found out you got accepted into grad school, you still are ending the, maybe you're going to a different school. Maybe you're all the people that you went to get your bachelor's degree with are no longer there or you're not taking classes with them anymore. So there's always going to be endings with beginnings and beginnings with endings. The lunar eclipse at the end of the month in Aquarius, four degrees of Aquarius, that's going to be endings of sort of a sort too, but also beginnings. So let's just start with the fact that the sun is in your sign from the beginning of the month. And so you feel a sense of vitality when the sun is in your sign. And cancer people, uh, typically, I would say that cancer people are shy. I don't know how many of you would disagree with me. If you have a fire sign as your ascendant that might be altered or even a, a, an air sign. But in any case, what this can entail is that you are healing from something or you just have more energy, you feel more positive, and you're just in an, maybe a good mood. And then on the 9th, Venus goes into Virgo. So Venus is in Leo until the 9th. Leo is very special for you because it's the second house of earned income. Now, what makes this so sweet is that Venus rules this house in the universal chart in the sign of Taurus. So when you have a, um, when you have Venus in its own house, it can indicate a period of increased income. And so for the first nine days, see if that is true for you and even coming into the month because it's probably going to be there, you know, for about two and a half, or was it three and a half weeks? Something like that. And when Venus is in that house, you may see that your income is increasing. You may feel also that your self-esteem is improved because the second house is about that as well. And this may even be connected to money where you get a raise and then all of a sudden you feel more confident about yourself. You feel like you're really a value, valued employee and that makes you feel good. And then Venus goes into that third house on the ninth and the third house deals with communication. In 2018, the internet is a big chunk of that, but also public speaking and writing of all types and learning and teaching. So this is about possibly being able to profit from these ventures. It also can mean finding love through the internet. So if you're somebody who maybe you've always kind of turned your nose up to online dating and you take the plunge and you meet somebody right away, this can also be something connected to your siblings. So if you've had any kind of conflict with your sibling, you may get into this period of time where you've, you're making up and you're uh, restoring harmony to that relationship. On the 10th, 10th of the month, Jupiter turns direct. Hooray for all of us. But Jupiter is in a fellow water sign in uh, in Scorpio. So for you, uh, Jupiter is actually in your fifth house of love, <laughs> uh, Cancer. So you may have, uh, if you're single, you may have felt like you hit a brick wall. Maybe you had a whole bunch of different possibilities. And then all of a sudden, come March or April, the it started to get a little bit thin in terms of these prospects. And you might've even thought to yourself, Hey, I thought that Jupiter was going into my love sector. What happened? Well, the retrograde happened. And so the retrograde is not necessarily a negative influence for 
any sign, but the the issue can be more of missed opportunities. So you may have um, gotten the chance to hook up with somebody that if you were involved with a partner before and this particular individual asked you out and you had to like turn them down. Now you might get that chance. But um, as I said, then Jupiter goes direct. But here's a uh, perfect example of what I'm talking about with the natal chart, Cancer. If you're watching for your sun sign, it's entirely possible that you could have Sagittarius rising and, and whatever um, planet is on the ascendant, that rules the ascendant, that's your ruler. So then your ruler would be Jupiter and it would be an even more important time when Jupiter turns direct because it may have affected you more uh, than, so than the average person. And depending on what house it's in, it may have been quite noticeable. So again, for you, it was your fifth house of romance, but also of creativity of children, maybe you're trying to conceive a child and it just didn't gel and now is when it's going to happen for you. Perhaps Jupiter will be in Scorpio until November 8th, I believe. So we still have several months of Jupiter's blessing in this fellow water sign to you. And then a couple days later is that solar eclipse I was talking about. So just look for new beginnings coming in your life in general. A new lucky cycle for you. And it's kind of like, it reminds me of the Wheel of Fortune in the Tarot. And I just realized, yeah, well, <laughs> the Wheel of Fortune is associated with Jupiter. So there's no surprise there. But the, the sense of cycles and how sometimes we're in this groove where everything is going well. Having Jupiter in the first house is kind of like a generalized good luck charm for you for the year. And then, of course, um, or did I say Jupiter? I mean, having a solar eclipse in this sign is very um, positive for you in general. <laughs> I don't know why I said I was looking at Jupiter on my chart when I said this. I didn't mean that you have Jupiter in your sign, but you do have it trining your sun or your ascendant. And coming from the fifth house, it's very good for creative projects or for um, any kind of conceiving of children because um, Jupiter is in a water sign and water signs are incredibly fertile as um, Cancer's uh, might know this already about themselves. So having Jupiter um, in that friendly angle coupled with the solar eclipse in your sign and then later this year having the North Node there, all positive. And you might see a lot of expansion in your opportunities in general. Okay, so... Then we're going to have, you know, it's funny in a weird way, even though we have all these eclipses, it's kind of like um, a bit uneventful aside from the eclipses. We do have a Mercury retrograde. I'll get to that in a sec. But on the 22nd, we have the sun going into Leo. And this, again, is that second house of earned income. You have... Venus having just left there a couple weeks earlier, and now you have the sun going in the second house. The sun can add any kind of positivity, creativity, uh, focus to this area of life. It's a very practical area. And the very, well, I was going to say the very next day, but actually it's on the 25th. And for some people, it's the 26th, depending on where you live. Mercury goes retrograde. It seems like we just got over a Mercury retrograde, and now we have to deal with it again. And this is very interesting because it's happening at 20 degrees of Leo on the 25th. So it's happening in that sector of your earned income. 
So this is going to cause you um, uh, cancer to be focused on your finances. And you may have to kind of um, review a little bit of what it means to, you know, earn money from a certain source. Now, one thing that I want to point out, which I think is very interesting, is that the number 23 in numerology is called the Royal Star of the Lion. So isn't that interesting that not only did I, uh, did we have, do we have a Mercury retrograde in Leo, but at 23 degrees of Leo. And it reminds me of this portal, um, I think it's called a a Stargate portal happening every August called the Lionsgate portal. And it's on eight, eight. So that is like a double, uh, fire energy as well. Remember that the eight represents August, the month of August, but also in the Tarot, the strength card, at least in a lot of the decks that I use. Sometimes it's number 11, but um, anyway, so I'm just going to read something it says. It says, Royal Star of the Lion, Guardian of Earth. The Royal Star of the Lion is the star Regulus, which means little king. This, this star is the heart of the lion in the constellation Leo. And this is called the karmic reward number. 23 bestows not only a promise of success in personal and career endeavors, it guarantees help from superiors and protection from those in high places. It is a most fortunate number and greatly blesses with abundant energy or grace the person represented by it. Now, in addition to looking at transits, we can also look at the degree in which the transit occurs like in in this case the the retrograde and at 23 and and by the way um i believe that was the same degree as jupiter went when jupiter went retrograde i believe it was at 23 degrees of scorpio so this number is popping up more than once and there's a possibility i suppose that It's, you know, pointing to August as a real shift in whatever is going on. I can only, like, speculate, but I just wanted to bring that up because I thought that was very interesting. So you may notice, um, and of course it depends on what type of job that you have. If you work for yourself, this may be more readily apparent. Cancer, where you don't have a fixed income every week or every month. And so you may notice a fluctuation. Remember that this too shall pass. This is only a few weeks that Mercury is going to be retrograding in that second house. And it's kind of like an interior thing where you might be actually doing a lot of Are reflecting on how you make your money in in some way. So that is very interesting. And I think, oh yeah, so let's end this reading about with the lunar eclipse, which is happening either on the 27th of July or 28th, depending on where you live at four degrees of Aquarius. A lunar eclipse is a very powerful full moon, and so it takes away things. But I think that it would be short-sighted to just characterize it in that way. It may take away things, but I believe it also gives opportunities to people who are willing to kind of um, accept that they can't control the situation. Because a full moon in general is a time of sometimes having this aha moment where, you know, you just have this enlightenment and 
the full moon is a very psychic time. So it can be like just realizing something about your life and that you need to let go of something because that's certainly true of full moons and lunar eclipses. The lunar eclipse can really uh, heighten this ability to let go. And actually Aquarius is a great time. When the moon is in Aquarius, it's a great time to break bad habits. So you've got a lot of support if you're looking to do something like that. Um, and I'm speaking in general. For you specifically, Cancer, this is falling in your eighth house, okay? Which can be other people's money. Now, the eighth house builds upon the seventh house, which is committed partnership. The eighth house is like this intimacy. And we're looking at this may be some kind of a psychic download for you that has to do with how you relate on an intimate level in relationships, whether it be sexually or psychologically, emotionally. Remember that the eighth house in the universal chart is ruled by Scorpio. So it is a fellow water house. And it has the same properties of emotion being the order of the day and what it's the focus is. For um, Scorpio, for the eighth house, it's more about metaphysical situations. I would say the fourth house is more practical. It's about home and family. That's the house you rule. But the eighth house can be about all kinds of you know, far out metaphysical topics, the dead or death issues. Um, <laughs> a lunar eclipse in the eighth house doesn't mean um, a death of somebody close to you. Not necessarily. None of these things can happen, but I did experience something with a full moon in my eighth house, but it was... In my case, there was something more than that. It was really aspecting me. Um, Aquarius, for you, is um, a very weird angle. It's not like um, an opposition. It's actually an in conjunction, if I'm not mistaken. Um, is it an in conjunction? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is, yeah. And... Um, so I think it's more of a case of letting go. This might be, you know, more about, yeah, yeah, I was talking about bad habits. This is really for that because the eighth house is about transformation and what's below the surface. This is a psychological house and you can really purify yourself. All full moons are beneficial for detox but the eighth house is, you know, because Pluto is about that, it's about regeneration. You are ruled by the moon. So you are very sensitive to these lunar transits for sure. So I wanted to, you know, keep you up on that. And that could um, lead with, with the fact that you have that solar eclipse in the first house of this whole new Cancerian going into... August, where you're like, you know, all bright, shiny and new. So yeah, I think I'm going to leave that there. And I hope that you make the most of this really dramatic and uh, transformative month for you, Cancer. Happy birthday once again. Take care. If you'd like a personalized reading, please click on the link below. Happy birthday. Bye.